Hello boys and girls, this is Daniel from Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to talk about Scala 3, and in particular how givens can work with implicits in Scala 3. So this video will assume that you're comfortable writing Scala and that you know some concepts about implicits at least. And we have a couple of videos here on the Rock the JVM channel that will discuss the new givens mechanism in Scala 3 and how that will replace the existing implicits based mechanism. However, the implicits mechanism will not go away immediately after Scala 3. It will be supported at least for the next couple of years, I anticipate. So it's definitely worth knowing how you can merge givens and implicits in the same code base at least while you migrate to the new givens based mechanism. So I'm going to write just a little bit of code because this video I anticipate will be just a little bit shorter than the usuals and whenever you need to refresh your memory just refer back to this video or to m the much richer blog version with the link in the description. So the article contains more details about how givens and implicits work, how they're similar and how you can work with each other. So let's go to our code and I've created a small object here with a main method that we might use to test a few things. So as recommended reading and watching, I would recommend that you watch the other given and using an implicit based videos here on the Rock the JVM channel. I'm going to link them in the description to this video. So, the new given and using combos in Scala 3 were created to reduce some of the power of the implicit keyword, which may be and often was in Scala 2 easily misused. So, um, even as the new given instances and using clauses in Scala 3 were designed to replace this mechanism, the implicit keyword has not disappeared from Scala 3. It will be slowly deprecated and eventually removed from the language. Now, this causes confusion. How are we supposed to continue using implicits? Because our code bases are riddled with implicits and Scala 3 might not be the easiest thing to migrate. The um, Scala team has gone to great lengths such that the migration is as smooth as possible, but the implicits and the macros will probably be some of the hardest things to migrate. So, should you use implicits? No, use givens. However, how can you use the new givens base mechanism with existing code bases, which are riddled with implicits? Now, the idea is that the given mechanism works in the very same way as the implicit mechanism for the purpose of finding an instance to insert into a method which requires that. Now, if I'm speaking psychobabble at this point, you might want to pause the video and look at the givens video instead. So, namely, if you specify a using clause, the compiler will look for a given instance in one of the following ways. So, this is the list of the places where the compiler looks for a given instance. So, first of all, if you define, let's call this a method with given arg, and I'm going to make it generic, and I'm going to say using instance of type t and this will return a t and as implementations I'm going to use that instance. And this is basically the implementation of the summon method which you will find in Scala 3 in the standard library. So when you, you use summon t this is the implementation of summon t and this is very similar to the implicitly method which I'm also going to uh, show you in just a second. So when you call an, a method with a given arg the compiler will search for a given value of type t. So for example, if I call a method with given arg with the type int, for example, the compiler will look for a given value of type int so that it could inject that into the using clause. And the places where the compiler will look for that is these four places in order. So first, the compiler will look in the local scope where the method is being defined, namely in this whole object that I've defined here. If it doesn't find anything here, it will move to the next place. The scope of all the explicitly imported classes, objects, and packages. This is also called the imported scope. If it still can't find a given value, then the compiler will move to the third place, which is the scope of the companion object of the class whose method you're invoking. So, if this was a class and you're calling a method with a given arg, for example, this thing, which belongs to the class, then the compiler will look in the companion object of that class for a given int value. And if it can't find that given value either, it will look in the scope of the companion object of all the types involved in the method call if the method is generic. So for example, I've defined this method as generic, and so the compiler will look in the companion object of int 
for example, where you have int dot max value, this int object over here contains all the possible um, constants and so on and so forth, including possible given instances. And so the compiler will look in, the, in that place as well. And that will be the final place where the compiler will look. And if it can't find a given value in either of these four places, the code will not compile at all. Now, I talk more in depth about this mechanism in the advanced Scala course, which you can find on the Rock the JVM website if you're interested. And I get into great detail and length in um, explaining and exemplifying all of these possible use cases. Now, let's assume I'm going to define a given value. And I'm going to define a given, let's call this meaning of life given, as an int equals 42. Now, at this point, the compiler is happy because it can find a given value here to inject into the using clause right from the scope where the method is being defined or called. All right. So in this particular call where you are calling the method with given arc, the compiler has found the value 42. And here, if I do print line a method with given arg of int, and with no parentheses here, because the compiler will inject this using clause, then we are going to see the value 42, obviously. So I'm going to wait for the compiler to compile my code, and we have 42, lo and behold. Now, the same thing will happen with implicit as well. So I'm going to comment this method, and also going to comment the print line from main, because this method doesn't exist anymore. And I'm going to do the same thing with implicit. So I'm going to define a method with implicit arg, I'm going to also make this generic and I'm going to use an implicit clause here. So I'm going to say implicit instance, which is a T, this returns a T and the value is instance. And this is identical to the implicitly T method that you normally find in Scala 2. Now, after the definition of this method, let's say I want to call a method with implicit arg with the type int. Now, when you call something like that, the compiler will look for an implicit value of type int in the exact same places in the exact same order. So for example, if I define implicit val, let's call this meaning of life implicit of type int, and I'm going to use 43 just to make a difference between those two. And now the compiler will happily compile my code because it found an implicit instance of type int here in the scope. If it didn't find in here, then the compiler would look for an implicit int in all of the rest of the places that it normally does. So now if I call print line a method with implicit arg of type int, I'm naturally going to see the value 43 here into the console. And this is normal, all right? So we have the value 43 in the console. Now, how do we interact between a method using a uh, using clause and an implicit value? And the reason is that if I uncomment this method and I move this implicit value above, then the code will compile. In other words, the call site of a method using a using clause is fully 100% compatible with an implicit val. So this implicit val can automatically be injected here into the using clause. So right now I can simply uncomment this print line and I can run this. And we'll see the value 43 printed twice because both the method with the given arg and the method with implicit arg were injected with the value 43, the only implicit value that the compiler found. So a using clause is fully 100% compatible with an implicit val. And this is a big deal because you can use implicit instances using using clauses. <laughs> All right, so you can use the existing implicit values in your existing code base with new methods defined with using clauses. So basically, old implicits work with new methods. This is really, really important. All right. Now, if I comment out the implicit val and I uncomment the given val, notice that the code still compiles. So this given instance over here is also compatible with a call with a method with given garg and a method with implicit arg. And if I right click and run, we're going to see the value 42 printed twice. So the other big thing is that a new given instance is compatible with an old method defined with implicits. So I'm going to move this above, one with givens and one with implicits. And this given instance is compatible with both calls. 
So this is a really, really big thing. And I'm going to paste a comment here so that you can take away the crux of this video. So the old implicit values that were present in your code bases are fully compatible with new methods with using clauses. And at the same time, old methods in your existing code bases with implicit arguments are fully compatible with the new given values in SCAL3. Furthermore, because the compiler will look for either a given value or an implicit value in these four scopes in this order, then the compiler will find the same kind of ambiguities if it finds an implicit and a given in the same place. So for example, if I define an implicit and a given in the same scope, then these method calls will not compile because the compiler will find an ambiguity here with the meaning of life given as a 42 and meaning of life implicit, which is 43. And the compiler will not know which to inject in these at these call sites. So if I run this application or if I attempt to run it, the compiler will say ambiguous implicit arguments, both the value meaning of life implicit and uh, given instance meaning of life given are applicable for that call site. So the compiler will find ambiguities in this sense. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and took away some lessons about givens and using and implicit in Skull 3. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this and check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn as I post fresh updates on upcoming material. I'm dying for feedback as usual, so leave your comments, I read every single one, and check out the Rock the JVM website as I have tons of courses and content on Scala and Akka and Apache Spark and Cats and Zero and functional programming and practice and interviews and Google style algorithms and so on and so forth. So check out Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, signing off.